folks we are here ah yeah 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 it's just a matter of hours just a matter of hours two three days and kenyans all over the country will go into a polling booth and cast their votes and seal their fates and walk into destiny wah 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 well on my video today i summarize what kind of campaigns we have seen and i also discuss a very interesting new trend that seems to be emerging oh yes it seems that kenyans will vote differently this time round stick with me and find out exactly what i'm talking about now wb number 81 is out very interesting stuff highly sensitive you can see details on your screens right now on how to get hold of the latest WAB in case you're not yet a subscriber. And of course you know when you subscribe you support my work on this channel. All for a better Kenya. And of course I've been doing this for a long time. I've not just come to start being an analyst because of the elections and the interest in politics. I've been at this for almost 20 years now. Yeah, with the Kume Kucha brand. So anything you do to support me will be greatly appreciated. But there's also some super fascinating information in this WAB. And of course you'll also get the back issues of every WAB you've missed. Yeah, and this offer is amazing. And unfortunately it's ending very soon. So take full advantage of it. Right! Now my daughter insists that she wants to introduce this video. So I'm afraid I have to humor her, give her the honor of welcoming you to my show today. Hello guys, welcome to my daddy's video. I hope you got your popcorn ready because it's going to be a blast. So enjoy! Chances are that by the time you take in this video, both the two major presidential candidates will have done their last rally. Yeah. Wrapped up their message to the people. Because officially, campaigns end today, Saturday, 6th August. The 2022 presidential election campaigns are done. Kwisha Maneno. And now is decision time. And therefore it is the perfect time to sit back and analyze what kind of campaigns we have seen from both sides of the political divide. Because this will give us a very good idea as to who will emerge winner of the 2022 presidential race. We will also analyze something super fascinating that seems to be emerging. A change in the way voters vote in Kenya. Oh yes, you heard me right. <laughs> you heard me right. Therefore, it should be super interesting for all of us. So let's start with the campaigns. And let's start with the campaign of Deputy President William Samuel Ruto. A campaign that has spanned over four years. Oh yes. In every corner of the country. A campaign that has literally poured money amongst the people. I mean, if you don't believe me, just go to the ground. And ask people, would you be interested in attending a William Samoy Ruto meeting? They are going to be very excited. Anywhere in the country. Why? 
because they expect a good handout. Huyu jamaa si mgamu kama yule mwingine. That's what you let them saying. And of course in Kenya we are not so advanced as to sit back as a nation and ask ourselves a very simple question. What is the source of this endless <laughs> cash that has been poured over the last four, four and a half years? He personally talk about it. Because in a western country, that would be a major point of discussion. But not in Kenya. At least not yet. And I believe most Kenyans are smart enough not to buy the story, the narrative, that this money came from selling chickens. <laughs> Somebody started selling chickens by the roadside. And then they developed, they had so many chicken farms bringing in 1.5 million shillings a day etc etc and by the way this 1.5 million shillings a day does not consider the costs of maintaining such a large flock of chickens anyway the deputy president's campaign has focused a lot on provoking emotions. Now, this is not a bad strategy because we have said it several times on this channel. Emotions are key in politics. Emotions are the difference between a low voter turnout on voting day because it is okay to have supporters, but are they going to turn up and cast their vote? You'll remember in 2017. As Kenyans went to cast their votes, Jubilee heightened the insults against Raila Odinga. Many people, of course, were disgusted, but it was a smart strategy yeah, to encourage people from the Mount Kenya region to turn up and vote. Indeed, they were threatened. Even as the emotions were chokozward, yeah, if Raila wins, all of you will have to wear captulas. <laughs> etc. etc. Yeah. Emotions are important. And therefore the deputy president's campaign has been focused a lot on generating emotions from the people in order to support him. And in one area of Kenya where this has worked like a charm is in the Mount Kenya region. Yeah. Because the deputy president has gone into the Mount Kenya region, spent a lot of money. He also managed to provoke a lot of anti raila venom and anti Uhuru Kenyatta venom. He managed to portray President Uhuru Kenyatta as a betrayer of the community, completely betraying the Mount Kenya region. And opting for Raila Odinga the enemy. That is really the narrative on the ground. That has generated so much emotion that today. We see a Mount Kenya region. Where the deputy president is expected to perform very well. Get quite a sizable amount of votes. And these emotions the deputy president has managed to provoke in the Mount Kenya region. Are so strong. That his supporters can never cross to the other side. You can't convince them. You can't. That's how powerful emotions are. And of course in generating these emotions. The deputy president's campaign has spent a lot of time. Talking about other people. Insulting other people. Now when you're attending a rally this is very entertaining. Yeah. It beats somebody coming to the podium. And telling you how they are going to improve on the fiscal policy. For instance. <laughs> boring, boring. Telling you about Babacare. Another example. Boring, boring to young people. I'm not sick right now. I'm not interested in that. That's the attitude of the young. Indeed a good way of summarizing. The tactics of the deputy president's campaign for the presidency is as follows. He has played to the gallery as much as possible. 
Now, what is playing to the gallery? Playing to the gallery is using every opportunity to look good, to entertain, to excite those people seated at the gallery watching the drama. Let me illustrate that further. You already have a play you're performing. You have your lines, the words you're supposed to speak. But then you go beyond your lines, beyond the words that you're supposed to speak. And you notice that most people in the gallery like Ugali. And therefore in your words you're supposed to say, Can you get that maize flour and make me a Kenyan dish? You change your lines and you say, Can you make me some Ugali? I need some real busuma. And then of course people laugh. You're playing to the gallery. You're not even a team player. Because the other actors in this play. What you're interested in is attracting attention to yourself. By playing to the gallery. Exciting the gallery. That's what the deputy president has been doing. Very successfully. If I must say. Now the problem with that approach. Is that it is not patriotic. It is not for the good of the country. Because in my opinion, at the end of the day, even if you're a politician in a very competitive race, your love for your country must overshadow everything else. Yeah. Otherwise, in my opinion, you're not fit to hold an important public office. Let me give you the perfect example of what I'm trying to say. Just two days ago, the deputy president told us that it is the government, the current government, led by President Uhuru Kenyatta, who is not even a candidate in these elections, who are in charge of distributing leaflets, hate-mongering leaflets in the Rift Valley. Of course, it's very entertaining and exciting when you hit out at very powerful people like Karanja Kibisho, who's a PS internal, internal docket, or Fred Matiangi, who's the CS in the same docket, and blame them for distributing these leaflets underground. That's intriguing. That's interesting. That's exciting. But if you step back and look at the larger picture, how important is security and peace to the country called Kenya? It is everything. And therefore, as a responsible, patriotic Kenyan, who is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya, what Ruto needed to do was to get on the phone and call the government and find a way to cooperate with the government to deal with these leaflets. Find a way to maintain the peace at all costs. That's what a responsible, patriotic Kenyan would do, in my opinion. Because I know many have a contrary opinion. But it is all about playing to the gallery. Now let's look at the campaign of the other side of the political divide. Azimio. Now Azimio's campaign has been old school in many ways. The approach has been to look at groups and communities. And win them over to the Azimio side. Yeah. One way this has been done very effectively is with women organizations in Kenya. By Raila choosing Martha Karua as his running mate, that has completely changed the equation. And as me has fully cashed in on this, yeah, many women organizations, including the largest, Mandela Wanawake, and Dani, Dani, Dani Kabisa of the Azimio narrative. They're going to vote Azimio. Team Azimio has even gotten an endorsement from the outgoing current president, President Uru Kenyatta, who has campaigned openly for Azimio. Yeah, indeed, he's the chairman of the Azimio Council. Clearly, the president is going to remain active in politics. But many Kenyans have not realized the impact of that support from President Uru Kenyatta. Because President Uru Kenyatta has got his own diehard supporters. Yeah. Who will now definitely rally behind Raila Molodinga and vote for him 
this coming Tuesday, the 9th of August. The Azimio campaign has also gotten dirty. Yeah, what I mean is that they've been drawn into the tactics of the deputy president side. Now you'll remember in 2017, there was a lot of work online on Twitter and other online communities spreading propaganda, spreading messages yeah, as part of the campaign. Now the gurus of that campaign, people like Dennis Itumbi, are now in the deputy president's camp. Yeah. But what has happened this time round is that the new kids on the block, on the Azimio side, have matched Itumbi at his own game. Yeah, we have had Azimio releasing their own propaganda videos, their own propaganda posts and information alongside truthful information. So much so that if a man like Dennis Itumbi were to be truthful, he would tell you this has been a very difficult campaign for him. Very difficult. Nothing like 2017 when he had a free hand. Yeah, he could do so many things with no response from the other side. They didn't even know what was happening. This time round, amekutana na wanaume wenzake. Yeah. Umundu humundu. That is precisely what has happened. The Azimio campaign has been very smart. They are focused on some very convincing factors. The track record of Ray Odinga, the presidential candidate. The track record of Martha Karua, the deputy presidential candidate for Azimio. You know in politics anywhere in the world, it is one thing to tell people, I will do, I will do, I will do, and you have nothing to show from your past. And it is quite another to come to the people with a track record, a very long, well-documented track record, and tell people, I have done this in the past, now I want to do this and that and that. It's very convincing. And although the mayor have spiced up their campaigns, with song and dance. Yeah. To the young people it has not been as exciting a campaign as the campaign of William Samoy Root and UDA. Where at every meeting where you go, you expect to hear exciting things. You expect to hear insults hurled at somebody. Yeah, that's exciting. Can't get boring. Now as a result of these two very different campaigns, some very interesting things have happened. For the first time in Kenya, it seems that voting patterns will change slightly from the very predictable tribal voting. For instance, in the Mount Kenya region, it is looking more and more likely by the day that for the first time in the history of the House of Mumbi, we're going to actually have a split vote. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. That has never happened before. Indeed, the House of Mumbi are very interesting people. In most instances, they have delayed the decision until the last few hours before the elections. The last few hours before polling starts, the community has made its decision. And it has always been a collective decision yeah, where they vote almost to a man for a certain candidate. We saw it in 1992 when many analysts were very confused. We had Kenneth Matiba and we had Moe Kibaki. And many were sure the most senior politician would get the votes. And then at the last minute, the House of Mumbi turned yeah, like one man. And they all cast their vote for a man called Kenneth Stanley Njindo Matiba. In 1997, it looked like the House of Mumbi was confused. There were even people claiming that a lot of Mount Kenya votes would go to the first woman presidential candidate in our history at that time. Yeah. Charity Kalukingilu. Indeed, if you had taken the time to attend her rallies in Central Province, 
you would have easily been convinced that this was what was going to happen. And then at the very last minute, the house of Mumbi turned like one man and they all cast their votes for the last person you would have expected them to cast a vote for. The person they had rejected firmly in 1992, just five years earlier, Mwai Kibaki, got all the Mount Kenya votes. Will the same happen this time round? Some analysts believe no. Some analysts believe the deputy president has got such strong support in certain sections of the Mount Kenya region, the kind of support that can never abandon him, whatever happens. And therefore, we're going to end up with a split vote. Now, in my opinion, a split vote is not such a bad thing. It shows that people are maturing to make decisions on their own rather than to make mob decisions based on what the community wants. People are now making individual decisions based on what they think is best for the country and for themselves. I think that is a step forward, whichever way you want to look at it. But that's just my opinion. Now I'm here to do my final video. I always do a video before every election. Yeah, where I give you my view of what I think is going to unfold. Yeah, and this view is well beyond the election results. And I believe in 2017, if you go back to the video I did on the eve of that election, everything I said came to pass. Yeah, because I'd done my homework. And I'm trusting God yeah, that he's going to be able to help me to do the same this year round. Because the truth is, the 2022 presidential poll is complicated, very complicated. It's not as simple as people think. But from where I sit, it is obvious, it's very clear, that Azimio and Raila Odinga are going to carry the day. Yeah, the question now is by how many votes? You see, we don't want a close election. Kenya does not need a closely contested election. That would be disaster. We need whoever wins the election to win by a landslide. Yeah? That will limit the possibilities of anybody going to court. That will limit, greatly limit, the possibility of any mischief. Because as I said earlier, one of the candidates is playing to the gallery. And therefore when you have an election where the results are so close to each other, it is easy to start playing to the gallery. And saying, oh, I was rigged, oh, the government rigged, oh, the deep state, this, that. Therefore, for the sake of Kenya, we need a landslide win for whoever will win. Yeah, so that it's done in the first round and we move on. It's only an election. But if you're a regular on this channel, you'll know that spiritually I'm talking a very different language. Spiritually, I'm saying that Kenya has reached a point where judgment must come. Kenya has reached a point where there's an election that will usher in the destiny of the nation called Kenya. But please give me a few more hours, a day or two, to tie in everything and to come up with something very accurate as a final video before you go to cast your vote. But for now, I urge Kenyans, think carefully before you vote, even if you hate yourself, even if you live dangerously, think of your grandchildren, think of your children, think of your descendants. How is your vote going to help them? How is your vote going to help bring us to a better Kenya? That is very important. Until next time, this is Chris. Cool, my coach.